Hi, Eric Schoenfeld here with TechCrunch and Michael Birch. We're in Monkey Inferno, which is your labs uh, where yeah. you incubate products and projects. Um, yeah. Tell me about you know what what you're doing here, and I kind of see you as part of this sort of new class of uh, what we call gentleman hackers, right? Uh, right, where you you try a, a lot of different things, and and some of them turn into products, some of them maybe might turn into companies. What's your yeah, approach? so we we left. Um, we sold Bebo nearly four years ago now, mm -hmm. and prior to doing Bebo, I was doing many different ideas on my own with my with my wife, um, and we would just try ideas, and we'd do one, and it may or may not work, and then we'd start doing the next, and they all sort of overlapped, and I could really only do one at once because I was doing all the programming. And then after Bebo, we just we did a bit of um, angel investing, and I didn't particularly enjoy doing that, and I just wanted to get back to building companies, what I enjoyed doing before, but you know, with the benefit of having Sol Bebo, we had the opportunity, we didn't have to just do one idea at a time, we mm -hmm. could do lots of ideas, rather than doing them one after the other, let's just do them all in parallel. Mm -hmm. um, we know some won't work, so why not do more than one, and if we do enough, one of them is going to end up working for sure, it's just a matter of time. So we decided to sort of get a cool office, um, somewhere that people wanted to work, hire some great engineers, uh, it's taken time. You know, I think everyone's aware of how hard it is to... You've been doing this for two hire. years already. We started about two years ago, but it's really only come together, I'd say, in the last six months. When did you get this office? We got this about a year ago. A year ago. And how many people uh, do you have working? We have, I think, about 18. 18? We've got a couple more joints. And do people here. come to you with ideas, or do you... No. Um, we have so many ideas that we want to do, that, which is why we really set it up, so we could do the idea. So it's not an incubator in the sense that uh, um, it's not other people's ideas. It's yours. Um, all the employees actually work for Monkey Inferno and then each idea we do has its own company. Mm -hmm. That company is owned by Monkey Inferno but the um, employees get equity in every idea we do whether they work on that idea or not. So is it sort of like an idea lab uh, model? Or yeah, I'm not entirely like familiar with the ins and outs of the different But it's not, Monkey Inferno is an operating company. Right. And it also owns shares in the yeah. individual Yeah, it's really companies. just a pass-through way of us owning our sales ownership in these things. I mean, people have to work for one company. We want the, the employees to jump between projects. Right. We don't want to hire someone to say, you're hired for this project, you only get equity in that, and you're not going to help out on the other things. We want everyone who's working together mm -hmm. to be equally vested in everything we do succeeding. And if something needs more resources or someone's got a skill that that project needs, then people can move between projects and we're not having to renegotiate equity as they jump between projects. And what happens if something really takes off and it has to, it becomes bigger than Monkey Inferno? Then we haven't got to that point yet. Um, we'll either, there's a fair chance that ideally I'd like to break it out to its own office and mm -hmm. someone in the company would, would head up that company and I would continue doing Monkey Inferno. And what are the, but how many projects really, do you have now? We have four going at the moment. Four. What are they? So we have Water Forward, which mm -hmm. is unusually the non-profit, so that's not going to make any money. Um, we have Jolitix, which is a political networking site, mm -hmm. um, which in the moment is live in the UK. We're redeveloping it and launching it here in about two months' time. Um, so we learned a lot. We learned what works and what doesn't work. So we're keeping everything that worked and fixing the things that didn't work in the UK. Mm -hmm. But obviously the US is the big market and with the run-up to the election, it's perfect timing. We have Zuno, um, Zuno and Birthday Alarm, which is kind of one project. So Birthday Alarm is a business we've had for 10 years. Um, it's got about 80 million members, mm -hmm. not all of them active. Um, makes about 3 million a year um, profit, has done for many years. So that's actually paying for most of what's going on here. Oh, well, okay, so you, you folded that into Monkey. That's folded in. And then Zuno is kind of a reinvention of that. Birthday Alarm being 10 years old, it's a little bit dated. Right. So and remind us, what's, it, what's the concept behind Birthday Alarm? So Birthday Alarm, it reminds you of birthdays, which has been a little superseded by the fact that Facebook does that now. Mm -hmm. um, so Facebook kind of beat Bebo and Birthday Alarm in the end. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then when we remind people of birthdays, we offer to... Um, for them to send an e-card. I got you. And so the birthday reminders are free. And that was very viral because I would ask you, um, the reality is people didn't used to know their friends' birthdays. They'd right. know their parents and their siblings and 
other half and children and that would be it so beyond that they didn't know so they would send an email to their friends saying when is your birthday mm -hmm. they would click on a link and enter their birthday for them right and then it would say do you want to be reminded of your friend's birthday so that was incredibly vile um, from an early stage and then we monetize it as I mentioned through the the e-cards so the e-cards people pay an annual subscription for and now that's called Zuno so we're keeping the birthday alarm name because it's it's a site with a lot of users right it's good um, and we're doing a new name called Zuno, which is taking some of the e-card inventory we have mm -hmm. from Birthday Alarm and then making it very um, social network centric. Um, we're doing an iPhone app um, mm -hmm. and we're, we're changing the, the vowel model to be group card based. So when I create a card for someone in the office, I send a message to everyone else in the office to sign so that sign card. The card. I got you. So that's, that's the kind of replacement on the vowel side of it. And then is, that, is there a fourth company? So the fourth one, which we may or may not do, we've actually put it on hold mm -hmm. because we took the engineers off that to focus on water forward, mm -hmm. is um, called Boya, which we may or may not keep the name, B-O-Y-A. Um, it's a long way from being live, and it's, it's sort of a chat roulette done well, so probably synonymous with airtime, but I haven't seen airtime yet. Right. Yeah. And then Jolitix, explain that a little bit. So what, define what a political social network would be sort of finding other people who care about the same it's, political issues um, and debating with them and trying to get, uh, you know... So the way Jolitix works is and anyone can create a proposal for change okay. on the site. Um, so we didn't want just want a discussion for and we wanted mm. something that was ultimately actionable. Um, so anyone can create a proposal. Anyone can then create arguments in a wiki-type way for and against that proposal. Mm -hmm. And anyone can also edit the proposal. Um, and then obviously comment on the proposal. And it goes through this draft stage where it can actually change. And then once it's beyond the draft stage, it goes to a vote stage where anyone can vote for or against. Mm -hmm. So one of the problems with the petitions online is that you can sign a petition, but you can't sign against a petition. Oh, I see. So if there's a million people sign a petition, you think, oh, that's great, right. it's got huge support. And of course, there may be 10 million people who think the petition's terrible and think the opposite. So we wanted something which had a more balanced debate for mm -hmm. and against. But we also wanted it to be important that people who were active on the network and saying the smart things and mm -hmm. creating smart proposals could rise in status. So mm -hmm. one thing you can do is if you're less active politically, you can nominate someone else to represent you on the network. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a little, you can answer questions to find out your compatibility with that person. Right. So if I nominate you, now when you vote on one of these proposals, you've got two votes, your vote and my vote. Mm -hmm. And you can gain more and more votes and then if I don't like the way, if, if I have nominated you, I can see everything you vote on. If I don't like the way you're voting and realize that we're not that similar, I can move my nomination to someone else. And so then th how do you get these propo the proposals that get the most votes, how do you then you know, get beyond sort of the petition phase to actually affect change in the real world? So, I mean, part of it's going to be about reputation and status of the network mm -hmm. as it grows. I mean, the more people who are doing it, the more focused that will be had on, on the network. So if, if you are someone who's got, say, ultimately a million nominations, mm -hmm. suddenly you've created a voice yourself that, that the media, that other politicians want to speak to because mm -hmm. you've become, you've created a position where you're influencing a million other people politically. Um, so that, 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 that's where we want to get to. But the, in terms of individual proposals, um, the, the government have recently um, create, created a way that you can submit proposals or, or petitions. Which government? Uh, the U.S. government. U.S. government. Yeah, uh, and I can't remember the quote the name of the website, but um, uh, and, and they, they guarantee a res an official response from the government, not necessarily that it will be voted on, but a, a, a response. So we see that we can feed these top proposals mm -hmm. into that system. So this is almost a way of curating mm -hmm. the content that could be submitted to government for consideration. Do you see this as being part of, you know, kind of these social movements that we're seeing you know, everything from Occupy Wall Street to the Arab Spring, where um, you know people are using social media and communications technology, mobile technologies, to sort of organize themselves. Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, it very change. much fits into that. And and the problem at the moment is social media wasn't designed for it. Mm -hmm. It's actually been used quite effectively for it. But but our approach was well, if we take a social network like Facebook, but instead of having it being generic, mm -hmm. design it specifically for this purpose, so that things can actually filter up, there can be debate, there can be opinion, and that, that the people who are most influential can 
can rise to the top, then that's going to be considerably more powerful. Now, obviously, the challenge is it's a critical mass thing. Like, no one's going to listen to a network that has a thousand users. Mm -hmm. But if we have a million users, then it starts having an impact. So we, we realize that the, the nomination thing is important because um, a lot of people are interested in politics, but only the top few percent of people actually really get involved in politics. But if that top few percent can actually represent the majority of people because they've gained mm -hmm. nominations, right. if we make every single person on this network effectively a politician that can actually gain support from other people, okay. then that becomes significantly more powerful. Is this something that there's going to be hooks into existing social networks like Facebook and Twitter? To It does, to yeah. I mean, it's not... Um, I don't think we're in any way sort of competitive with the likes of Facebook and Twitter. It's very much a part of that social fabric. But, you know, I think they're, they're, they're certainly great ways of, of enabling this to, to grow and promote itself. And when does it launch in the U.S.? In about two months' time. Two months. Okay, yeah. terrific. Well, thanks for taking the time. Thank you.